a major new tool in the battle against Alzheimer's. That's what drug maker Eli Lilly thinks they have on their hands. The drug could be available to the public by the end of this year. So in trials so far, the drug Donanumab slowed cognitive decline in some patients by up to 35%, and nearly half of the trial participants showed no Alzheimer's progression at all after a year on the drug. Eli Lilly says they now plan to submit for full FDA approval any day now. So for context, we want to welcome in Dr. Jennifer Cottle. Doctor, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. How significant of a breakthrough is this? Well, let me tell you this. We certainly need more than what we have for Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's disease is, is so devastating for so many families, including myself. I'm a family doctor, but I've had many patients, uh, rather many family members in my own family with Alzheimer's. The more tools that we have in our toolkit to help fight this disease, uh, potentially the better. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, and, and thank you for mentioning that personal note. I know so many Americans are, are touched by this. Uh, in, in your opinion, how close is this to a cure, or is that overstating it? Well, this is the thing. I, I always believe in, in the idea of being hopeful. We do not have a cure for Alzheimer's. This is not a cure either. But the idea is there are so many scientists and researchers, uh, physicians, clinicians, et cetera, on the ground working towards not only finding drugs, medications, and therapeutics for Alzheimer's, but also hopefully finding a cure as well. So I'm going to say let's continue to be hopeful. Um, but no, we don't have a cure yet. And, and that's one of the reasons why all of the things that we can kind of sort of add on and sort of develop and bridge uh, on top of is going to be valuable. Any significant side effects in this trial so far? Yeah, so they have found some side effects, um, you know, and I think this is one thing that we're going to have to keep our eye out for. We, as a family doctor, I always say that, you know, uh, there's there's probably nothing in this life that doesn't have potential side effects. This drug does have some potentially serious ones as well. So I think um, as we see more data with this drug, as we see how it plays out, we'll learn more. Um, but yeah, uh, this may have some potential side effects for some people and probably will not be right for everyone as well. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, there's uh, some other other health news we want to get your uh, take on. The U.S. just approving the first ever vaccine for RSV. It's that respiratory virus that does endanger both babies and older Americans. How soon will people start getting this shot? And is it something that all Americans are recommended to get going forward? Right. So this is a vaccine um, that right now is approved or has just been approved for people 60 years of age and older. We know that RSV um, affects can affect anyone, but it tends to be more serious in the very young and people over the age of 60, 65 ish, people with uh, underlying medical conditions, et cetera. So the vaccine right now seems to be one dose for people over the age of 60 years old. We still have to wait for additional approvals. The ACIP, the CDC committee will still have to vote on it and make a formal representation recommendations about who exactly should get it, et cetera. Um, uh, it's not available right now, but the hope would be, um, should all the approvals go through, um, that it's uh, hopefully even available as soon as uh, the next uh, cold and flu season, although we certainly would have to wait to see. And on the other hand, we are monitoring several shortages of necessary drugs for many Americans, um, from Ozempic to Adderall as well, even amoxicillin. Do people yeah. need to be concerned that they won't be able to get the medicine that they need? You know, honestly, I've seen this a lot in the office as a family doctor. I've seen a number, and in, in literally in the last, say, six to nine months, I have seen a number of patients where literally we are calling multiple pharmacies. I'm giving patients written scripts so as opposed to electronics so that they can physically go to different pharmacies to see if their drug or medications in stock. Um, I, have, I have been involved in this more than I ever have, and I absolutely believe and know that these shortages are real. Um, you know, this is the thing. I, I don't think people should be, say, worried, but... But I would be proactive, meaning I wouldn't wait to request a prescription refill until you're out of medications or something like that. I would be proactive. I would stay on top of it. Uh, and if you have a medication that you know tends to be uh, on the sort of a shortage list, there are many articles that talk about the meds that are, um, you should plan ahead with your doctor. Get a plan in place as to what you will do if your drug is not available. All right, Dr. Uh, Jennifer Cottle, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.